Hi, welcome to the Property Show. I'm Jayashri Kuro from America MBTV. We're talking about STPs, how you can stop pollutants from entering water bodies. And joining me in this discussion is um, S. Vishwanath, he's Director of Biome. There's uh, Usha Rajagopalan, she's chair, a Chairperson, Putena Hali Neighborhood Lake Improvement Trust. And Tarun Sebastian Nanda, he's an environmental engineer. Tarun CT has asked that um, uh, there has to be decentralized uh, STPs across cities because the amount of waste that is going into the uh, sewerage uh, uh, network is way more than what the cities can handle and water bodies are getting untreated waste now. Vishwanath, help us understand what your uh, experience has been and how do you bring consumers on board when orders like the NGT order comes through? In the civil engineering world and in the world of uh, sanitary engineers, globally with the international water professionals, uh, we no longer call it sewage or STPs. Uh, the common word uh, which is in parlance is used water. Uh, so it's either wastewater treatment plants or used water treatment plants because to give it that benign nature of it. The second thing that's being realized is how much of a valuable resource it is. As much as a pollutant it is, if it's left untreated and left onto the water bodies, if taken care of properly and there are various methods of uh, taking care of it, there's something called a fit for purpose treatment. If you do that, you find that this used water has a tremendous amount of nutrients in it, which is excellent for plants and uh, soil as a conditioner, as a fertilizer, and there's a lot of energy in it. You, know, you can recover energy from it and actually run your used water treatment plant using this uh, energy from the used water. The third point is that there are various steps in this ladder by which you can convert these wastewater treatment plants into, in, so far as an, a set of apartments called TZ does in Bangalore, they actually blend it with fresh water and drink it. And they've been drinking it for the last uh, 10 years, you know, about 94 uh, apartments. An intermediate way of dealing with this used water is to treat it adequately and be able to leave it into what's called a constructed wetland. And then once you polish it in the constructed wetland, then you can push it into the lake and the lake can be biodiverse as Usha will obviously give it a strong example of the Hali Lake. So the overall thrust of the uh, sector right now in Bangalore City especially is to start to look at used water for ecological purposes, for agriculture purposes, and for urban purposes and to reuse. And uh, uh, there are examples from an individual house to a set of apartments, to a gated community, to a watershed, which is about 15 million liters per day, to the city itself, where the city itself now is functioning like a fertilizer factory, Bangalore City, and is pumping close to 500 million liters per day of treated used water to fill close to 200 lakes in the surrounding drought affected districts. Right? So that's the scale of the issue. Uh, if untreated, a pollutant, if treated, a resource, a very valuable resource. So if uh, the sewage is going to be let into the storm water drain, going to fill up any lake or river, wherever, it is ultimately going to percolate into the ground and your borewell is going to yield very, very uh, dirty water indeed. As far as we are concerned with the Putanali Lake, it's a small lake in, my, in our locality. Uh, obviously, when we started this, we were just people living in the uh, locality. We had absolutely no idea about how one goes about uh, taking care of a lake. That's what we are. We are official citizen custodians of a lake. So uh, common sense is that uh, sewage has to be stopped and the uh, lake has to fill up with rainwater. But if it doesn't rain in one year or if the uh, rainfall is inadequate, then the lake is not going to get filled up. And that is what happened to us in 2011 after uh, BBMP had rejuvenated the lake and the inlets uh, became active, the rainfall that year was not enough to cover uh, more than 50% uh, of the lake. So we started looking at alternate sources of water. And uh, in the apartment complex that I live in, South City, we, it is the, we have a very good STP, which is uh, being maintained by the uh, owners association. And uh, uh, five of the newer blocks have a dual piping system where the treated water is being used for flushing 
and extensively in the complex uh, gardens. We have a very, very beautiful garden. Uh, so obviously this water is of a much better quality. And uh, we uh, requested the association to uh, give us the excess water. Then we met BBMP and uh, they were a re little reluctant saying, what if something goes wrong with the STP? And this we found to be pretty ironic because at that time, most of the lakes were filling up with sewage. And here we are saying we'll fill it up with, uh, with the treated water. Anyway, they did come on board and we met the pollution control board and uh, they wanted to know who will take... Uh, you know, a responsibility if something goes wrong. So the three of us, that is the Apartment Association and uh, the Lake Trust and BBMP, we signed an MOU. And from uh, 2015, we have been feeding the lake with the uh, treated water and uh, that completed the transformation of the lake. So as uh, Vishwanath said, treated water can really do a lot of good to a lake and to groundwater, but somebody needs to do it and I think that somebody has to be all of us. Uh, you, you have been in a region where people have been protesting against the decentralized STP uh, movement. Help us understand what the concerns have been and how it, has, it can be addressed. Uh, so I think most people are concerned that uh, an STP is going to smell. I think that's uh, the main concern that residents might have. And also about the, how much the government's spending on it and whether it will perform. Um, that's really the only way those kind of fears can be uh, alleviated is by uh, hiring a competent person to actually do the design and uh, using processes that don't uh, require open water and uh, okay. by actually making something that works. The problem with India is that there's no real sewage network. So you can't now lay new sewage pipes for the whole city of Delhi it, it would cost a small fortune. And then also the STPs yeah. that they tend to make uh, never really work. And if you walk along the Yamana, you can see all the STPs uh, releasing partially treated wastewater uh, into the Yamana. They want to maximize their profit, so they don't use as much as, uh, of the aerators as they should or the pumps as they should. Many different types of STPs, and some require operation and maintenance, and some don't. Uh, even the ones that don't require maintenance and operation, the authorities claim they do, uh, which is why, I mean, for all the nature-based solutions, they don't really require any operation and maintenance, uh, which is why you don't really run into problems with them. Whenever there's a chance for them to sort of save money, uh, that's why the machines tend to not work, or they're poorly designed in the first place. Uh, that's why decentralized solutions are good for residential areas, because you don't need to run a whole sewage network pipe and uh, the residents can actually manage it themselves. Okay. Okay. Uh, Vishwanath, the same question that I asked Tarun. When there is, when it is planned at the design design stage, there is one way of doing it. When it is retrofitted later, there is another. Uh, there are many other problems that come up. Every the tough one, and it's actually retrofitting, which is the cause for concern for a lot of apartment owners, and genuinely so. Right. So the advantage with future planning is you can not only design for the collection in an appropriate place, you can locate it so that it is uh, not next to a residence or not next to somebody living, right? So you can design it carefully so that it's a park there or there's a gap or a buffer between people's residence and the sewage chain. But more importantly, when you design beforehand, you can uh, put in place the dual plumbing lines, which uh, Usha was pointing out, so that no treated wastewater is then able to be consumed within the apartment. Right? When you're retrofitting, doing the dual plumbing line sometimes is very difficult because there's no space or there's no constraint. Yeah. So that's so it's a case-by-case -case basis that we'll have to figure out how to retrofit in, a, uh, in uh, apartments, old apartments. But perhaps there's a, a, a via media step where a set of apartments can come together and you can have a decentralized wastewater treatment plant covering um, that in... in What's happening in Bangalore is that a portion of the lake, for sure, is dedicated to the sewage treatment plant. It abuts a lake or a lawn, and there, then, as Usha was pointing out, that treated wastewater is available for the lake to be pulled throughout the year. Mm. But this requires a bit of a delicate negotiation negotiation between the NGP order, which wants to protect completely the lake boundaries, uh, as well as the desire to keep make sure that sewage is collected, treated, and that the lake is kept. 
when, when there is water and you know that the pollutants are entering the water, how do you get people together is, uh, to understand that STP is a good thing? And we have, a, uh, you know, encroachments on uh, one side of the lake and they had found it very, very difficult to accept that uh, the water that was coming from this apartment complex is not raw sewage, but treated water. Uh, I don't think they are still able to accept that because also because the lake, which was once looking like absolutely a dumping yard was now really looking like a lake with, you know, rippling water and things like that. And also public attention turned on them as well. Okay. Saying the rest of the lake is so good. Why is uh, uh, this part of the lake so bad? Uh, that apart, uh, the sewage is for us, the problem of sewage is not at all from the STP but from uh, the neighborhood uh, underground uh, drains, okay? Because, uh, you know, it's not a dual piping that we have here. It is uh, one single underground drain for both rainwater and sewage. So during the monsoon, it will tend to uh, become absolutely uh, full and it will start overflowing. The manhole cover will get displaced and it will come down into the stormwater drain and enter the lake. So that is a problem for us. And also, let me also add at this point that uh, uh, when we told the BBMP that look, our, even after all your inlet pipes have been let in, have been fixed and uh, it started raining, the lake has not been filling with the uh, water. So they offered to give us an STP, build one on the lake bund, I think which is what uh, Vishwanath was saying, but we very uh, politely but firmly refused because uh, STP requires a lot of maintenance anything can go wrong you know even if the power fails or the uh, the operator is uh, you know he just plays hooky and he lets in raw sewage into the lake you will not even know for quite some time so we did not want to take any chance at all with having an stp on the lake bund we were very lucky that uh, the apartment complex is at an elevation and uh, we get water from gravity by from the STP at this apartment complex. But otherwise, it can be a problem because uh, no apartment complex will want to incur the expense of uh, putting up a uh, pumping water, the treated water into the lake. Water bodies in Delhi are completely polluted. So it's understandably, it's understandable that uh, the public have a negative perception to them. And uh, at least as far as I'm aware, most plans to revive water bodies generally fail. And uh, even if you do something successfully, it doesn't last long. Some of the technologies which have been working, and in Delhi too, in the Lodi Gardens, uh, I know that there is a soil biotechnology uh, decentralized system, which is about, I think, if I'm not wrong, 1.5 million liters per day. So parts, and if you go to the SVT treatment plant, it's a vertical uh, filter and it's landscaped on top. It's beautiful. You can't even make out that it's a, a sewage treatment plant or a used water treatment plant, right? So uh, plants, then there is a system called phytorid system, which is developed by Niri and that also uses hibiscus and a gravel filter, planted gravel filter. Then there is these DWARs, decentralized wastewater treatment systems, developed by a group called CDD, you know, Consortium for the DWARs Dissemination. So three of these prominent technologies actually work as landscaped gardens. And the the challenge is that at least in Bangalore, we had one case in Jakur, where what we did with the Bangalore Water Supply and Sewerage Board and the community group was to open up the sewage treatment plant to the public. We were telling the BWSSP that it's not a nuclear facility, that it has to be kept secret. And there's also a problem from the authority sides because running an STP is not, uh, it's not easy, right? Uh, there's quite a challenge in it. it. Even in estimating flows into it, the kind of quality of sewage which has changed, all of this has become a problem. And they're also working their way around it. Now, if the public constantly criticize uh, STPs and WWPPs, that does not build morale. One way of doing it in Jakku was to open it up and then allow people to come in and see how the process operates and to see how it could be made smell free, right? And therefore, the association was able to keep track on the quality of the wastewater treatment. And they would quickly report if there was the, the plant was not functioning or if there was a problem in the flow. And then the plant would get back and say, oh, sorry, we are down for about a couple of hours. We'll fix it and right like that. So it's a question of building trust, showing examples, demonstrating constantly, 
and constantly assuaging the fears which emerge from something new in the background. Right? Actually, in Gurgaon, I would think that parks would be a great place to set up small uh, um, decentralized plants, which are SBT, soil biotechnology or phytorin uh, based, and then to scale it up and make many more of them quickly. Okay. And uh, the one of the big fears is that there would be smell, like uh, you mentioned. There was the uh, fear of smell, the fear of uh, excess water being let out, and you know what happens if there's more water and it will flood the area. These right. are the yeah. So I, I will take away Usha's time for two minutes, and uh, because it's her turn to answer. But Usha, you'll get your chance. Don't worry, I won't be long. So one of the ways now we have to deal with it in India is to use what is called a wetland system, a small basin and a wetland system, polish it up first, and use it for groundwater recharge, right? The earth itself is a good filter, provided the treatment quality is appropriate on the top, and then if it's polished by a wetland, and slowly we'll have to move towards that so that it, there's no flood in the area, but it goes into the aquifer, and what's called managed aquifer treatment, that's a, a technology that has been adopted in Australia, for example, that needs to come in, in uh, into high density areas like Gurgaon, but which also have open spaces, right? It's not that uh, there's no open space in Gurgaon. There are these parts and these are these common places where, where uh, that can be tried. People are scared because they don't know anything about it. Once they become conscious, first of all, everybody should understand what happens to the fecal waste from their own houses. Where does it go? When you buy a house, I think the first thing you should find out is where does all this waste go? Okay. And uh, then see what you can do about it. Please get, it's not rocket science. It just requires you to be uh, aware of your own uh, needs, your own waste and the, whether it is uh, fecal waste or whether it is solid waste, please handle it yourself. Why do you pass it and then blame the government? So uh, in our uh, lake, at least what we have done is to, uh, uh, everybody in this locality knows that we have been filling the lake with the treated water. And if by chance sewage does come in at any point, then uh, they would typically call us up and say, look, sewage is coming in. So in order to make that work, uh, reduce that work for us, we put up on the board there. This is the BWSSB sewerage board local uh, ward office number. Please call them. So if we call and the ward office doesn't listen to us promptly enough, they will get flooded with calls from all the visitors to the lake, the walkers to the lake, because they have seen how the lake was and how it became when sewage entered the lake. And the BMP is giving a makeover to the lake. They are completely uh, removing all the contaminated soil, getting it ready for the monsoon. So it is as if like the 10 years that on which we slogged and slaved is absolutely of no use. Now you install an STP in different places. What, how do you choose the technology that is uh, right for that place? Is it the, um, the government agency that has to do it? Is it the contractor who has to do it? And how do, how do residents know? After all, I'm, I'm, my job is not to understand everything about an STP. So how does a resident know whether the right technology has been used and that it is uh, well installed and well maintained? So generally, it shouldn't be specified by the government agency because they don't have the expertise. Uh, the government agency should appoint a professional engineer who can then present uh, the different options, uh, how much they cost and what are the different benefits. And then the government agency can make a decision, uh, hopefully in consultation with the residents. Um, but the main problems in India are operational and maintenance. Yeah. And ideally you should be uh, spending the least amount of money possible. Uh, I mean, why spend more of the public money than you have to? Uh, that's often not the case though, especially in Delhi. Um, but you can find out loads of information uh, just on Google about... Which is the technology that is most frequently used? Most frequently used? Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure what, what but uh, if you've got a space for, uh, it all depends basically how much space you have available. If you have uh, lots of space available, then you can go for natural treatment. Yeah. And there's even ways to squeeze that into a smaller space. Yeah. Um, if you've only got like a single room, then you have to do, use some sort of machine 
um, that uses the input of energy, such as electricity or chemicals, uh, to do the same treatment. Um, okay. But it's, it's all available uh, online. The residents can search uh, wastewater treatment. Actually, uh, wastewater treat not be doing it. My contention is that that's not the resident's job. If the residents, uh, if it is the city, civic authority's job or a contractor's job, the residents need to be engaged. But I don't think the residents need to do their um, research on what technology should be used. Vishwanath, I'll take it back to you. How does the well, what is that equation? I'm trying to come at, at that equation. I, today, I can see a lot of conflict. There is a, uh, a civic authority, there is a um, implementing agency, and there is a resident uh, who's, who's going to be living there. How do you resolve this conflict? Who, who needs to know how much? Well, uh, just, it's always a starting problem, right? In the city of Bangalore, for example, we have examples of successes and failures. Now, like I was telling you, it's a set of apartments called TZ, which yeah. actually use uh, the use water, the wastewater for drinking purpose. They blend it with fresh water and they use it for drinking purpose. Now, yeah. if a set of apartments are interested in uh, understanding how wastewater can become drinking water, we take them to TZ with the help of the TZ Apartment Association. And the TZ Apartment Association did their own research and installed their own STD, right, on their own. Yeah. In a gated community, there's something called Rainbow Drive. So they had a junk STP with them for some time. The association got together, did a bit of research, and then finally settled on something called a phytorid system. And that phytorid system, treated water, is now going to every house. And every house does a kitchen garden with it, right? So you can go and consult these citizens group, and it comes straight from them as to how they choose the technology. Okay. Now, what the authorities have to do is to at least get a small manual or a booklet out explaining all these case studies everywhere, and if the residents are willing to give a contact number, say, okay, contact Usha if you want to revive a lake, right? Uh, but do it between Friday 3 and, and 4 because that's when she can handle the phone calls or she'll be deluged by it. So building trust is the name of the game. And building trust is through building uh, success stories with the association doing the talking. Now, they can explain what the problem is. They can explain what the cost is. They can explain what the maintenance is. Now, in regard to the operation and maintenance, as Karun was mentioning, uh, there's now something called a hybrid annuity model in which the owner or the operator invests his or her own money as an entrepreneur check, but then gets the return over 10 years and he or she has to maintain it for 10 years, the STP, right? So you can work out financial plans by which there is some pressure on the installer of the STP to be able to run it and make sure that it performs to the NGT standards, which are now very high. The decentralized uh, STPs are perhaps not capable of meeting the NGT standards now. Some of them, you know, the uh, biological ones, because phosphorus has to be less than one, total nitrogen has to be less than uh, 10, and the BOD has to be less than 10. in redundancies. You have excellent packaged uh, plants which do, which are now fail-safe. In the case of Usha, the system failed because the external switch, which was uh, unmanaged, ended up flooding it. It's not their system that failed. It's not the lake or their STP. That is performing perfectly fine. Their STP has been doing great, a great job for the last 12 years. There's an STP in Kaban Park in Bangalore, which actually takes wastewater to drinking water standards, run by the municipality, which has been doing extremely well for the last 12 years. Right? So you have fail-proof uh, you know, projects also. Everywhere there's a learning curve, but they quickly caught on to the game. And now we can design STPs to not fail. Uh, that can be done. It's not, it's not difficult. Okay. Tarun, you want to say something? Tarun, you... Mr. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes. I know it just, uh, it was mentioned that decentralized systems, uh, biological decentralized systems can't uh, meet the standards. But uh, I don't think that's entirely true because you can, you can actually create drinking water with these kind of natural systems. And it's much easier to remove the phosphate in natural systems as opposed to machines uh, where it's much harder to remove the phosphate. 
-hmm. So uh, biological decentralized systems are capable of meeting the standards and capable of removing all the phosphates, nitrates, and producing a BOD of less than five, uh, as long as they're designed properly. Okay. And uh, what is the role of uh, residents like uh, Uta? In your case, it is a lake. Suppose there is no lake where the water is going. How, what, how do you check that the, uh, your system is functioning well? Help us understand what your role has been. Uh, sorry, this question was to me, right? Uh, yeah, see, um, uh, before I say that, actually, I would like to uh, add at this uh, point, we keep talking only about STPs in apartment complexes, mm -hmm. right? But that will be a surefire excuse for the uh, sewerage board to pass on the responsibility. Okay. They have a role to play too. In, as in our case, it was not the STP which was polluting our lake, but it was the, uh, the system which was maintained by the sewerage board that did not work. The underground drain network did not work. So they have a prime responsibility before saying that you people living in apartment complexes are polluting the environment. Uh, they have to say, what are they doing to set things right? Have they given us a proper underground drain network? Are they doing anything about it? And if at all uh, apartment complexes are handling their own uh, waste, they should be given some incentive. Okay. There should be uh, some cess on the uh, sewage line, which is the output which comes from the apartment complex that should be waived. What is the incentive? Why do you just keep it banging on the heads of the apartment complexes and say, you have to pay up? You, why don't you reward uh, uh, apartment complexes, which have a very good STP, where they are using up all their water, Vishwanath has already given you two examples. My apartment complex is an example. When you see, when you uh, reward such uh, uh, instances, the others are more likely to follow suit. Is otherwise, this they, otherwise, they'll say, look, it is your problem. We are giving you, uh, we are paying our taxes precisely for you to handle the waste. You do it. Okay. So uh, have there been incentives? Has it worked anywhere? It, they, no, they do not give any incentive at all. Uh, I'll sort of slightly disagree with Vishwanath. This, uh, I think, uh, doing the right thing is like virtue and honesty. Virtue and honesty is its own reward, right? So I think a responsible citizenry and a responsible apartment association will benefit from the wastewater. They use it for toilet flushing. They use it to enhance the uh, landscape and the garden and to make the lake all right. So I. I think, Usha, we're getting this uh, notion of a reward from the state or a subsidy from the state, in my opinion, uh, is perhaps uh, uh, something that we can uh, debate about. Right? Uh, of course, the uh, BWSSB and the Pollution Control Board have to do their uh, job too, right? And that has to be done. That's the next level of engagement. You have to figure out why is the BWSSB not capable of putting the sewerage network? Why is the Pollution Control Board not capable of regulating it? Those are meta questions at advocacy levels. What you find is the BWSSB is broke because it is giving subsidized water to every citizen in Bangalore. And it is collecting sewage at a subsidized level. Every citizen in Bangalore, or every household which consumes 20,000 liters of water gets some monthly subsidy of 1,650 rupees. 1,650 rupees, it's subsidized. Now, are citizens willing to pay the true price for water? Are they willing to pay the true price for collection of sewage and treatment? In which case, Usha will say, I want my apartment to treat my own sewage because the kind of bills the BWSS we will give you will be three or four times more than what you'll spend in getting this. So that's a system failure. Either you have to pay for uh, the uh, um, actual price for it, in which like uh, that the incentive is that I can I can reduce that. Yes. Or you have to, or, uh, or people will not understand that it is not my responsibility. It is my responsibility, not only the states. Jesse, we have to build a mature urban citizenry. And it cannot be done on socks, you know. And it's the rich people who have their snouts in the trough, to pardon the expression. They are the ones who are subsidized the most. It's the poor who are paying the highest cost, right? So we have to get to that stage where we do the right thing for its own sake. And we do it well. And we show it to demonstrate to others. Usha will agree. She's a good author. Oh. <laughs> well, let me, but let I still insist that they have to do their part of the work as well. No doubt. 
<laughs> and let me let me pick up questions. We've got a lot of questions coming in. And then <coughs> jump in and answer these. These are uh, questions from actual end users. Should STPs be outside the housing society complex, or can it be within the society? Depends on the distance. It can be within the uh, society complex. It can easily be there, and it can be non-smelly, and it can perform very well. There are technologies and systems which can do that now in India. Okay, uh, Rahul Nagpal asks, what are the pitfalls whilst making STPs? What can go wrong with an STP, and how can it be rectified? Engage a good designer, engage and experience the uh, constructor. Don't skimp on cost. Don't go for the lowest bid. Make sure that you see examples in other places and make sure that you hand over a contract in which the person who installs it also runs it for five to 10 years. Okay. Um, there's another question. After installation, proper maintenance and operation of STP is also important. How to ensure that decentralized STP maintenance happens on time and properly? Maybe Tarun can take that. Tarun, would you like to take that? So if it's uh, properly designed, uh, a natural system doesn't require any operation and maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the only way to uh, maintain a machine is with daily operation. And for that, you've got to hold the authorities accountable or the contractor who has the contract. Uh, they have to be accountable. But uh, then you're into the realm of how do you hold the government accountable for all its mistakes and its incompetence and overspend the public money. So that's a whole separate issue um, that I don't really see changing anytime soon. Okay, okay. Um, um, fair enough. Uh, Usha? Which is why we generally make these nature solutions. Okay. Uh, Usha, how can, uh, what happens, uh, how do you ensure proper maintenance and operation of the SCP? And what happens if it is not uh, maintained properly on time? Uh, we don't have an STP to maintain. Okay. Your apartment has it, Nusha. Sorry? Your apartment has the STP, no? Usha. They have. And uh, it, is it is maintained very well. well unfortunately, huh. one of our residents happens to be in this uh, business itself. So he has a vested interest in maintaining it because he gets a treated water in his own uh, uh, toilets. <laughs> okay. Right, but then it also need, need somebody interested from an association to be able to do the oversee, right, oversight, and then keeping everybody on their toes, the contractor on their toes. Exactly. And even, exactly. That, even that ecosystem has to be built up. Then yes, I, actually, I, every yeah. month uh, the water is tested and from in a, a lab, and it that uh, record is maintained. So any variation it uh, gets to know. And the advantage in having this dual piping is uh, people living in those uh, flats, you know, they know that it's treated water. So even the slightest whiff and they will create hell. <laughs> and, uh, how did you, uh, did you always have uh, 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 STP when the, uh, was it at the time of design of your building or was it retrofitted? Uh, actually, I think STP was built a little later, maybe a few years later, because it was uh, it became mandatory uh, to have an STP in an apartment complex of our size. Uh, but uh, the builder hadn't maintained it very well. Mm -hmm. And once our uh, association took over, uh, they uh, rehauled the whole thing. And uh, now they are maintaining it very well. And the charges are met uniformly by all the owners. What happens to the silage? Uh, how often do you have to harvest it? The the um, the what is um, manure? The sludge. The sludge. I'm sorry. The yeah. sludge. So, so the sludge depends on the kind of treatment that you are putting uh, the yeah. wastewater treatment plant that you are putting in. Yeah. Some of the activated sludge uh, process in what's called the activated sludge process, there's much more of a generation of sludge. The sludge can be sun dried, solar dried, and it's an excellent soil conditioner and manure. In many apartments and uh, gated communities, farmers come and take it from a tractor road and use it for cultivation purposes. Okay. How often so do you have to remove it? Uh, once in uh, a nicely designed STP would say once in six months or once in a year is when you re uh, require it to be removed. But then it de depends on the load of switch coming in. Okay. And how, uh, how uh, uh, which means that you must have tractor access to the uh, to wherever it is being 
So uh, the design of a wastewater treatment plant has to take into consideration the whole life cycle of it, right? All the operational details, including good ventilation, including access, including standby systems for electricity and making sure that the system is fail safe. And do natural systems need electricity? See, natural systems are very good. Um, uh, they don't need electricity if it's gravity-based. But right now, uh, once you treat it even in a natural system, you still need an electricity to pump it to the flats for dual plumbing use, right? So though I'm all for natural systems, like governments and a big advocate, the kind of space requirement in a natural system is huge, it's huge. So we need a hybrid model which the natural system does part of the work as it should, and a part of it could be uh, the conventional model. We have to be a bit realistic about it. What about if there are large parks in layouts, for instance? Let's, let's take any layout. If you take a large park and put an STP under the park, what are the dangers? I mean, let's talk about the flip side of it and uh, for and against. There's no danger at all. It becomes an education center. I'm saying that water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants should be the new museums for our youngsters to learn what biology is, what treatment of sludge is, and as Ushava was rightly pointing out, where does our waste go? And the citizens have to confront the fact that they're, they're responsible for taking care of their waste and nothing like an STP to build education and water literacy. And the, even even a bit of slight you know, smell and bit, the children love that stuff, that kind of gory stuff. But we have to show it and we have to take responsibility for it. Absolutely. Well, Ushaya, what do you say? Absolutely. I agree with you totally. So uh, do, you, do you actually display to children, to citizens, average citizens, how, what you, citizens are interested in the... Uh, in uh, figuring out how it works? I, you know, if, uh, because we are close to Jakur Lake and uh, Usha would tell you that, that there are many children and many citizens who come to the lake to see the birds and biodiversity. Now, if you could put an ad on and take it to the wastewater treatment plant as something to learn, everybody's interested in it. It's for the first time in their life they're seeing something like this many a time. You know, at, of course, it's the first time in their life they'll be seeing a good lake also because unfortunately children are not exposed to something good in our system. But it's possible to do that. Right? Uh, I have a question from Ravi who says, do, does all sewage water go into rivers? What happens to industrial wastewater? So industrial wastewater in theory have a zero liquid discharge norm especially those industries which are categorized as red by the state pollution control boards, have to make sure that not a drop of either solid waste or liquid waste leaves their campus. If, it, if at all it leaves the campus, then it has to go to biohazard zones for it to be managed. So in theory, in practice, many small and medium industries discharge their waste, including heavy metals into streams and lakes, and that causes the pollution. And, and uh, that is uh, currently happening in a lot of uh, cities, right? Including ours. Exactly. Okay. Uh, there's Rahul Nagpal who's come back and said, how can we ensure correct practices spending in a STP project? Can we have a citizen watchdog, private consultancy? What would be the expense for a private consultancy? These are actual uh, citizens asking um, practical uh, issues. Uh, Usha will tell you that the gentleman who's there in the, in, we, we are a talent pool of retired people and people who have interest in various things. As Mr. Nathpal is, is interested, it just takes a computer and a bit of Googling now to be the master of wastewater treatment plant. Right? So oversight is not at all difficult. It's the level of uh, passion that we put in into it. And then there are very good con uh, consultants and very good contractors also available. That's the kind of partnership you should build between them so that there is complete transparency in what is being installed, right? Citizens have to know what is going to get there, what is, how much it will cost to run, what will be the quality of treatment, what will be the kind of problems there. It's like going to a doctor or anywhere else. You should get that kind of advice from a good wastewater treatment plant designer. Okay. Uh, what are the laws uh, uh, around uh, decentralized STPs? Are they mandatory in localities and who's responsible for them? Usha, you want to take that? In Bangalore, every set of 20 flats and apartments or 20 sets of groups of houses, 20 or more, have to have their own wastewater treatment plant in Bangalore. They have to figure it out in Gurgaon and Delhi, and most likely it will be around the same because it's a national law which is going around. And uh, what did the NGT order say? The NGT order has now upped the game. It also not only demands the setting up of wastewater treatment plants, but also has escalated the quality of treatment. It has brought BOD, biological oxygen demand, from 30 down to 10. It has now added phosphorus. That phosphorus also has to be less than one. 
total nitrogen less than 10. So it's become more stringent. Okay. Okay. Usha, there's Akanksha who said, this is so true, people actually don't know about the need for STPs. Does every city need decentralized STPs? You want they to? Do. Because every, every city is going to generate its uh, huge quantities of waste. So how are you going to treat it? You do have to take care of it in your apartment complexes, an STP or a decentralized system. You have to have an STP because as I said at the outset, we have a responsibility towards water. So we need to become aware of that and uh, work on this. And again, as Vishwanath said, if you, uh, you have to have uh, a general interest in what's happening in your neighborhood as well, not just within the confines of your home, but even in your apartment complex, you need to find out what is happening outside and uh, become a part of it. And it is uh, possible to solve your problems. Uh, I have uh, uh, both of you are answering questions, actual questions and consumers are asking a lot of them. How is the quality of output from STPs? Are they toxic and cancerous? Like I said, the example is given, it, uh, it can be taken to drinking water standards. In Singapore, they call it new water and drink it. I was telling you the example of Bangalore, where the, the set of apartments for Pisa drinks it. You can release it for agricultural use without any problem at all. You can leave it into wetlands and to, and to lakes after you've done the treatment so that fish grow there. And the fisherman in the Potenali Lake is a happier soul because he has, uh, he has a produce to sell, right? So it's absolutely not toxic once treated well, and it can even be taken to drinking standards. Uh, yeah, Usha? I, it's much, much safer than your sewage polluting the underground uh, water. Okay. So rest assured. Um, Tarun, I, uh, can you hear us? Are you with us now? Ah, I've, I've just reached home actually, sir. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what are the simple and effective ways to check performance of a sewage treatment plant? Can STPs installed underground and have a park over it? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, so the, there's typical water quality parameters such as BOD, COD, uh, suspended solids. Uh, and you obviously want to check for uh, bacteria. Yeah. Um, nitrates, phosphates. Tarun, and, uh, settle down and uh, let me get Vishwanath to speak and why don't you settle down and answer, right? Uh, yeah, uh, Vishwanath, uh, what are simple and effective ways to check the performance of a city? So two things that citizens can do is the smell test. Yeah. Stick your nose around that place. If it's stinking out to high heavens, then there's something going wrong there, right? The second thing is something called dissolved oxygen, right? And that's a dissolved oxygen meter, which will give you an instant indication as to whether it's performing or not. Ideally, treated wastewater should have a dissolved oxygen more than two parts per million. Uh, or four is the ideal number, right? So these are two simple tests. Then it needs laboratory level tests for you to establish whether it's working or not. That's and the ones, once in a month. That is once a month. Once the system is stable, it takes some time for the STP to stabilize itself because the bacteria which do the actual dirty job in the STP have to, like Dahi, you know, have to settle themselves and become good at doing their job of digesting the carbon, of making sure that the nitrogen is also handled. Once uh, STP is stable within one month to three months, then it's a steady performance unless there's a shock load. The other thing which citizens and apartment owners will learn is that the kind of stuff we are putting into our switch lines, right? all kinds of dishwashers, all kinds of scents, all kinds of products which are, we are using in our bathroom, all of this is now ending up in our STPs, right? So a, a responsible apartment owner will start to shift to eco-friendly detergents, eco-friendly soaps, will not dump oil into the STP area, will not dump solid waste into it. And there will be a behavior change which will be needed to make sure that the STP does a better job. And it's a question of learning. Okay. Uh, Usha, how did that learning happen in your... Uh, this also happens only when uh, people in the apartment complex know about the STP and they should be the first people to have a visit of the place. So uh, then they will automatically not uh, discard things uh, down the drain. Right. You know, once they see that it's ultimately going to there and come back to them. And it's also any uh, uh, escalation in cost is going to pinch them the hard way because it's going to be reclaimed from them. 
So the awareness has to begin with residents in an apartment complex or independent houses, whoever they are, that they visit the nearest STP, see what is happening, and in their own apartment complex, see how it is working. Take turns to monitor it. And as he said, once a month, uh, testing of the water will show you how it is working. And if it is dual piping, anyway, you will get to know sooner than that, thanks to the nose. Um, Tarun, you want to continue? You would speak. Tarun? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry, sorry about all that. Uh, okay, so uh, we were talking about the water parameters to see if an STP is working. Yes. So, I mean, it's, it's very easy normally to see just from the output water quality, whether it uh, foams if you have it in a fountain or whether there's any smell or if it's cloudy. Uh, yes. So, uh, uh, that you but, don't even need uh, to sample for. But that would be when you have dual, uh, uh, dual piping system so that you can see the quality in the uh, toilets and things like that. Otherwise, how does a consumer know? It has to be regularly tested, is it? Yes. Yeah, if there's no visual indicators, it has to be tested. Uh, although you can get these online monitoring systems that constantly monitor it and will alert you if it's falling below the performance, but they cost at least a lakh each. So uh, they're only good really for community housing. Um, or if you're going to, if you're, if you're testing it every month, then the cost of the water samples in the two years will pay for the system. Um, but really it's the job of the authorities to check that, to make sure that it's functioning and you're not discharging anything into the environment that you shouldn't be. Um, but yeah, pretty much you can, you can actually buy lots of these water sampling equipment for yourself and it works out cheaper than, uh, going to a company to do it all the time. And you don't know whether the company you go to is doing the job properly and actually taking the water samples correctly. Uh, from what we've seen, the authorities don't know how to collect water samples and uh, they don't follow the sort of standard operating procedures that most engineers would. Um, so um, the best is to get like, you can get a TDS meter, you can get a pH meter, uh, you can get those testing kits for aquariums that will let you measure nitrate, phosphate, so there's lots of testing you can do yourself or uh, pay a company to do it. Okay, Vishwanath, I can see you're bursting to... Uh, was... <laughs> no, I think Tarun, we'll have to build a bit more trust and uh, cooperation between authorities. And you know, if you <laughs> keep on saying things like <laughs> they don't know what to do and they don't know what their job is, I don't think uh, that will help the dialogue move forward. So I'd suggest that uh, <laughs> we build a slightly more positive atmosphere. Let me so put I mean, it we are dealing with people who have never had decentralized STPs. You never thought of where the, uh, where your, uh, the, uh, like uh, Usha said, where your poop goes. But the point is that <coughs> because of the NGT order, a lot of people have to be concerned and they do know that it's poop, right? So they are justifiably, for, for somebody who's never thought of it, they've never uh, they are scared that they are contaminating their uh, backyards, right? And that's that's the fear. Now, the thing is that the uh, city authorities have um, picked up consultants, not necessarily in consultation with the consumers, and they have given the city over to the consultants. Now, it's the role of a consultant, uh, the role of the residents who know nothing about this technology and who's very, very wary of everything to uh, now go work with a consultant who has been thrust upon them. And that's where we come in and we are trying to disseminate information to those residents saying that this is how it has to work, which is why I'm asking each one of you. Now, Tarun, your point that many uh, authorities don't know how to collect, but they're not doing it themselves. They're giving it to consultants like you who know how to do it, right? So the point is that it has to be through consultants and people who are experts in what they're doing. Now, Vishwanath, I'll come back to you. The question that they ask, can groundwater get contaminated with sewage going into a pit? Absolutely, absolutely. If, uh, if it's untreated wastewater being sent into a septic tank or into a pit, then it will contaminate your groundwater in no time at all. So but that, had something to say, she had a hand raised. Yes. Actually, what I was going to say is that we shouldn't overthink, you know. 
Let us look at a couple of uh, STPs which have been working well and you adopt that technology. You don't have to be an expert. And as it is, there are lots of worries in everybody's heads. So why take on, why buy uh, uh, you know, um, uh, a gadget to test this and test that and all that? Because who's going to maintain all the records? Simply go to an, a tie up in an accredited lab and take, it, take them in good faith. Test the, get the water tested every month in a good lab and that's it. Don't worry so much. Don't overthink so much. At the end of the day, the treated water is going to do far, far less damage than letting out raw sewage. Uh, there is a question, interesting question. Despite much progress in the modern sewage treatment plants, dispersed sources uh, continue to uh, cause a large fraction of water pollution problems. How can it be eliminated? Okay. So one of the things is uh, rapid explosion in cities, geographical growth and population, and a lot of it being unplanned, has made the job of putting um, sewage networks very difficult for even the authorities. And there are no monies with these authorities also to be able to rapidly expand the network, what, which has resulted in on-plot sanitation systems like septic tanks or pit toilets, you know, something of that sort. Now, these have been highly unregulated. Even the building bylaws do not specify how they should be, what they should be doing. It's only now we are getting into managing it, right, in the Indian context. So, therefore, it has resulted in this dispersed form of sewerage. So, two tracks we have to adopt. One, to expand our sewerage network, make sure that it's collected, treated in decentralized manner, and then reuse as quickly as possible. The second one is to look at on-plot systems to make sure that they conform to standard designs and that they are frequently emptied and cleaned you know, using these vacuum-sucking trucks taken to the right place, composted, reused sludge, and things of that nature. So both of these things are happening now. It's called fecal sludge management and wastewater treatment management. Okay. okay. And uh, Usha, are you called upon to talk to, uh, uh, talk to residents in places where it's newly uh, being, you know, whether it's uh, uh, ponds being cleaned or uh, lakes being cleaned? Or She's a star. She's a star. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All the time. So, uh, uh, how do you how do you allay fears? Fears fear is definitely there, right? Uh, fear about uh, what? Uh, I, they, they are concerned already about the lake dying, so they want to do mm -hmm. something about it. And uh, actually, we share our experience. We have a very good working relationship with the BBMP. We are still uh, establishing it with the other departments because a lake is not really the responsibility of one specific department. It is a government as a whole. It is a pollution control board. It is a sewerage board. It is a stormwater drain. It is, of course, the lakes department. All of them, the slum board, if there are encroachments, all of them have to come together. So uh, on the one hand, we are establishing a, a better, more uh, quicker results oriented uh, relationships with the other departments. And also we um, tell uh, residents, whoever wants to uh, revive a lake in their locality that uh, how we went about doing it, we give them the contact numbers and uh, they go ahead and we are there anytime to no. help out in whatever way we can. And nowadays it's not just from uh, Bangalore, but from other cities also that I get calls. So if anybody wants to know how we went about it, we'll be very, very happy to share our uh, limited experience. But uh, Vishwanath is the expert. <laughs> you take her autograph before anybody's. <laughs> Uh, Vishwanath, when, when new uh, uh, places, when you have to uh, set up STPs in new places, how do you allay these fears? The same question that I asked um, Usha. Uh, you know, there's nothing like going to a place and seeing how something functions, understanding how it is. There's nothing like a good example to allay your fears, right? And so we need these models, these good examples in every neighborhood, every city for us to be showcased as to how things can work properly which would mean that the, uh, the system has to open up and allow their wastewater treatment plants to be to the public for seeing it. The one I mentioned in Lodi Garden is doing a fabulous job. CSC helped uh, do that with that SVD. I don't see why it should not be a place where everybody goes uh, regularly and sees it and says, uh, good job, and this is what I'm going to get. Okay. 
Yes, in fact, in fact, I was speaking to the uh, municipal corporation of Gurgaon, and what they have done is they've got a very uh, a functioning system in sector 15, and they've got a functioning system that's uh, soon to be operational, I think, sector 49 or something, and they've decided to just showcase these. Any comes to you and says, I have a problem, they're going to come and uh, say, come and see this, we'll explain it out to you, and this will be replicated in your neighborhood. If this doesn't happen, uh, uh, if the, uh, there is no problem here, there are chances that there will be no problem in your neighborhood, right? Tarun, uh, do, you, do you work with residents at all, or do you only work with authorities? Uh, no, so I mean, we've done it, we've done basically made these STPs for two slums in Delhi, and that involved working with the local residents there. Then there's the local residents at House Cows Lake. Yes. And uh, we sort of half work with them and half fight against them. Yeah. So um, residents are sometimes a problem and sometimes help. So uh, there's two aspects to that because residents also pollute the lake. Um, so do you have to carry them along when House Cows is a shining example of what you can do with a, revive, a tank revival, right? And it's a, it's a historic uh, tank. Uh, well, see, actually, the, the water quality has been degrading over the last six months because uh, the authorities have started adding phosphate, sulfur, and heavy metals to the lake, which has actually increased the algae. Okay. And very surprisingly, some of the residents are actually supporting the authorities in this. And uh, I think they're basically agents for the contractor type of thing. So sometimes you also have to fight against the contractors, fight against the public, and uh, uh, building on what uh, Mr. Vishwanath said, you know, I don't actually think we need to work with the authorities. I think this responsibility should be taken away from the authorities because they've demonstrated over the last decade that they're, they're incapable of actually doing this job. They have no idea how to do sewage treatment, no idea how to revive lakes. And all they do is spend a lot of money and show no results. And this, actually what's happening in Delhi now is a perfect example of it. The Delhi jail board has claimed they revived Rudrokri when it actually it was a failure and have used that as an excuse to spend hundreds of crores on more hundreds of water bodies. And the DDA is also now gonna revive 30 water bodies when they can't even maintain one that we've partially revived and haven't even revived a single lake in the city. And they spend crores on it. So why, why should they continue to waste our money? <coughs> Let's take the responsibility away from it, give the water bodies back to the public and take the budget away from the authorities and give it to the residents and say, you spend it, you do a better job and there'll be much less corruption, much greater transparency. <laughs> and something good will actually come out of it and there'll be good results to show. Actually, uh, you should have somebody like Usha who has said that I'll work with the authorities, I'll work with the residents, bring them together because ultimately it's not without the authorities or without the residents that you can achieve success. And uh, the fact that uh, if, if there is a problem, the groundswell itself will uh, take care of the problems that happen. Yeah, Vishwanath. Yeah, no, but uh, like Tarun said, and Usha does it also. It's not that we are working with the, the authorities in partnership. We are railing at them, criticizing them, screaming at them, writing in papers, writing in social media, criticizing them. But we also work with them simultaneously. And the, the institution is not one homogeneous body, right? You criticize the institution, but you work with the people within the institution because you need friends there, you know, you, those engineers to, to help you out there. So that's a fine art we have mastered here, Tarun. We're doing an online course for six months, Tarun, on how to <laughs> criticize authorities and also work with them. Uh, we are, Usha is going to run it and hopefully you'll join. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's sometimes you reach the end of your patience and you realize that the authorities, the individuals are the people are that are the problem. <laughs> And they're the ones making so much money and yeah. they're never going to stop. And the moment our backs are turned, they, uh, they are very willing to pollute the lake so that they can make money. Right. And they can't go on like this. So we're actually filing cases and uh, we're going to take legal action against these officials and uh, authorities. So it's an endless battle, but the point is that somewhere we have to begin. And uh, I think the battle has already begun. It's a question of how we can take the battle 
no areas now uh, clearly tarun is fight, fighting a rather lonely battle but uh, there seems to be a lot of people who are willing and able to come at the micro levels to uh, assist the um, the consultants the authorities and therefore we feel that this is this is a good thing and the reason why we've done shows like this is because we feel that consumers need to know more the system needs to know more about what can be done thank you so much for joining the property show pleasure thank you thank you